Hey, welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. In previous videos, I showed how to prep a bumper and a hatch door for paint. And today, I'm going to spray them with color and clear right here in my garage. First, I'll cover steps to transform my garage into a makeshift paint booth. Then, show how to mix the paint and spray it. Same for the clear coat. And then clean up after. Next, we'll jump forward a couple months after painting to look at the parts installed and a couple minor mistakes I made because we can all learn from those. We'll also see how much money I saved doing this repair myself. So this will be a long how-to video, but it's full of tips I've learned over the years. So here we are in the garage the night before. I have to get up early and paint in the morning before it gets too hot. All the products I need are here, ready to go. I got the color paint here and the reducer for that. This is a fast reducer, so it's to be used between 50 and 70 degrees. It's been a hot summer, so that's why I'm getting up at 6 a.m. to get started before the sun comes up. Here's my clear coat. This came with a complete kit, and uh, I don't think they make these anymore. I've had this for a while, but it comes with a uh, quart of clear, hardener, and everything else needed like a mixing cup and a stir stick. A gallon of paint thinner, I'll be using this to clean the paint gun when I'm all finished. I won't use too much, but it's always good to have some extra. A mixing cup to use with the color and reducer. And of course, a respirator, so I don't die in here. I have some strainers for pouring the paint into the gun. And some tack cloths to remove any dust for a final wipe down before painting. Shop towels. And some extra paper towels. I have rubber gloves somewhere. Over here is my paint gun, Platinum HLVP by Sharp. I've had this gun a while, so I'm comfortable with it. Also important is a place to hang the gun with the air hose attached. It has to stay vertical so any paint inside doesn't uh, leak around the lid. A regulator is a must. This lets me fine tune the PSI going into the gun from the compressor. Speaking of which, Here's the compressor. I have a water trap installed to catch any moisture before it gets into the hose and goes into the gun. That's important because you don't want moisture mixing with the paint. Here's a water spigot and a hose. I have this ready to go because before I start painting, I'm going to spray down the entire floor and that helps prevent dust from kicking up. Dust is the enemy when painting. I swept the whole garage, but more dust will magically appear in the next six hours before I'm ready to paint. Over here, I have a fan to pull the air out of the garage. I'll just open the door a couple feet and this will be ready to go. It looks janky, but it works. I have to pull all the fumes out of the garage somehow and I'd rather not have the doors wide open and deal with bugs. If air is going out, then it has to come in somewhere. And I have some air filters up here resting on the attic opening. That way, no dust comes down from the attic. You want the air coming in from a high point, like a window, which I have none of, and going out at a low point, like the floor, so overspray and dust doesn't get pulled up from the floor. I think this should work, but if it gets too cloudy in here, I can always crack open the man door in between coats. And these vehicles will be outside in the driveway, of course. I have the bumper up on stands and there's enough room to walk all the way around without bumping into anything. That's the last thing you want when you're trying to paint. I have the hatch there and the hatch trim piece here hanging by wire. The hatch is sitting on wood stands that I put together. I have to paint the inside edges too so I have those accessible. Glass is all taped off from overspray. And I have the top suspended so I can paint the underside. I've got it hanging from the ceiling. I know this looks rickety, but it's sturdy and I made it using things that I already have to save some money. Oh, and I went through the garage a week ago and sucked up all the spider webs that were around the perimeter by the ceiling. And there were a lot. I vacuumed all the corners and floors too. It won't be as clean as a professional paint booth, but Getting all the dirt out is the best I can do. One more important thing, have an extra flat surface available for adjusting the pattern on the spray gun. 
I have this sheet of cardboard and I'll just put it right here next to the gun. So I can pick up the spray gun, get it adjusted, then walk over and start painting the hatch. All right, it is first thing in the morning and before I paint, I'm spraying down the entire garage floor. This helps prevent dust from kicking up and landing on my freshly painted surfaces. Just don't go crazy with the water. I'm keeping the nozzle down toward the floor so no water ends up on the hatch and bumper I'm about to paint. I don't need puddles of standing water, just a little on the floor is good. I'm going to be dragging this hose around with me, so I like to wipe it down before I start painting. You'd be surprised how dirty hoses can get. Look at that. Don't want no dirty hose in the garage when I'm trying to paint. It's time for one last wipe down with DX330. This is my favorite degreaser. I never found my rubber gloves. I recommend you use them. This stuff dries out your skin. I'm using a blue shop towel because it leaves less lint than a regular paper towel. I'm doing the degreaser right before I paint because even overnight dust accumulates or maybe a bug landed on the hatch and pooped. Any dirt or contaminants on the surface can cause problems or fish eyes in the paint. This DX330 evaporates after a couple of minutes. I've got the reducer here and this is an extra step that I always do to be safe. I pour a little bit into the gun and spray it through. I always clean the gun after using it, but this is just to be sure there's nothing inside that can contaminate the paint I'm about to spray. Especially since I've also used this gun for oil-based and water-based paints in the past. I can also start to get the spray pattern dialed in. All right. It's about to get pretty fumy in here, so time to put this on. Here's the Touch Up Express paint I got on Amazon. This is a quart can. It's a urethane base coat, just like the OEM paint. It was 80 bucks. We'll see how good of a match it is when everything's done. You always wanna stir this with a clean stir stick. Never shake the paint because that can create a bunch of little tiny bubbles. Bubbles are bad. Now this paint uses a one-to-one -one mix ratio, so we'll go to two on the mixing cup. Then with the reducer, I'll pour, pour up to the four. Throw the lids on real quick to keep any dirt out. Now I definitely need to stir this and mix it well. Here's the clean strainer. This is the last chance I have to keep any dirt from getting into the paint. Put this here, just in case I drip. Actually, here, I'll pour it over this bucket. Just don't pour it in too fast so it doesn't go through the strainer in time and there won't be any mess. That was about the max my gun can hold, so keep that in mind when you're mixing the paint. Don't mix more than needed. All right, I'm almost ready to paint. Hang this here for a second because I have to do one more thing. I'm gonna do a quick wipe down with a tack cloth just in case there was any lint from the blue shop towel. This is just a sticky cloth. It's really thin. Just unfold it and open it all the way up. Then ball it up like a loofah and do a final wipe down. I already degreased with the DX330, so any oils are removed, but now I'm going back to get any lint that might be left behind from the blue shop towel, or any new dust that might have landed on the parts. You might think I'm OCD when it comes to dust, but when painting in a garage, it absolutely helps to achieve professional results. I'm not pressing down hard at all with this. I am lightly wiping. The tack cloth picks up any dust, so there's no need to use pressure. After each panel, I turn over the tack cloth to a fresh side. I wiped all the primer areas. Now I wipe this newspaper too, just in case there's dust on this. It won't get blown onto the areas I'm painting when air from the gun hits it. But I'm using the tack cloth here last in case it picks up any fibers from the paper. Now it is finally time to paint. 
This is why I put the cardboard up. I'm happy with this spray pattern. Off to work. The first coat is really light. You don't want to start off with heavy coats because you'll end up with runs or orange peel. Many light coats is the way to go with a heavier wet coat at the very end. Make sure to get the undersides as well. See why I needed the gloves? This blue looks much lighter than the color of the car, but don't worry, it will darken as I apply more layers. I went a little heavier on the underside because this area is mostly going to be hidden, so some orange peel here isn't a big deal. I was a little thin on the hatch, so it looks kind of splotchy and uneven, but that'll even out as I add more coats. On the bumper, I'm painting all the edges and hard to reach areas first. I like to do the hidden areas first, then the main surface that will be visible last, so any overspray from the visible areas will end up on the hidden areas and not vice versa. It's strangely satisfying, isn't it? The prep is a lot of work, but I enjoy the painting. If you're a professional watching this and you're cringing, let me know what I'm doing wrong. I've learned from experience and advice from painters over the years. This is something you get better at the more you do it, but I'm always glad to learn new tips from the pros. And then I pass what I know on to you all. Oops, a little heavy there. I like to get in here at different angles to be sure I cover all the different contours of the bumper. Well, that's the first coat. Oh, by the way, I'm running about 30, 32 PSI. Okay, I had a little bit of paint left in the gun, so I just used it to add some more coats to the underside, jams and edges. It's ideal to do those areas when the gun is almost empty because if I run out of paint halfway through, it won't be as noticeable as if it happens on the main surface. Now I'm getting ready to fill the gun again for round two. Same as last time. Stir. One part reducer and one part paint. Mix them together with the stir stick. Lid off the gun. Strainer in place. And fill the gun. Alright, good to go. The second coat is the same as the first. A light coat to avoid any runs or sags. It really darkened up the hue compared to the first coat. The air temperature was already getting up to the maximum recommended range for the reducer I used. 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This causes the paint to dry faster, which means it can lay down a little rough or bumpy like an orange peel because the paint doesn't have enough time to self-level before it starts to flash. So I went right into the third coat of color since I had plenty of paint left in the gun. Having multiple pieces to paint gave me enough time to allow the hatch to dry while I painted the trim panel and the bumper. Ideally though, I should have bought a slower reducer for the warmer temps since I didn't get around to painting until the weather got hot. Oh, better put a disclaimer here. I'm not responsible for any harm you cause while attempting to do any repairs to your own vehicle. Be smart. Also, check your local laws, because I know in states like New York and California, you'll get a hefty fine if you paint your own vehicle at home. Here's a better look at that orange peel. Now this is very minimal. It's more like a sandpaper texture than orange peel. So I'm not worried about it because after I apply the wet coat of color, this should all fill in smooth. I'm also looking over this with a bright light to help see any thin areas. Sometimes with all the glare from the overhead lights, it's hard to see any thin areas with all the different contours on this hatch. Because I'm doing a dark color, it makes it harder to see with all the glare. So I shut off the lights and had another look with the spotlight from my phone. Look right here and you can see the paint is thin right under the edge of this glass. That's definitely a little lighter in color. It's a hard spot to get into with the spray gun, so I'll be sure to get in there with some more paint to get that area evened out. The rest of the hatch looks real good, and so does the trim panel and the rear bumper. I'm glad I took a minute to do that because otherwise I would have noticed that until everything was done and the hatch was out in the bright sun. I'm mixing the last batch of color here, and after this I'm moving on to the clear coat. 
The first thing I'm painting is that light area right below the glass so I can get that area even with the rest of the hatch. The last coat of color should be a little heavier than the other and that's called the wet coat. The wet coat helps to fill in any light texture from the earlier coats and leave a more uniform surface. I don't want to get too greedy on the wet coat or I'll end up with a run or a sag, especially on the vertical surfaces. I could probably go a little thicker on the wet coat since it's getting warmer in the garage and I'm right around or even over the recommended temperature range of the reducer, causing the paint to dry a lot faster. But it's not worth the risk of a run in the paint because I still have the clear coat to put down on top of this and that will also act as another wet coat to help even things out. Here's how it looks after the wet coat starts to dry. It's a matte finish because this is just the color base coat. What's important right now is that it's a smooth, uniform finish with no dirt, dust, or runs. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. Especially considering I'm not a professional painter and this is set up in my garage. If you're painting, wear something comfortable, but not anything that's going to interfere with what you're doing. I usually paint in an old t-shirt and shorts so I don't get too hot and sweat everywhere. Also, I like to wear an old hat so none of my hair ends up in the paint. They make full disposable suits, but they're hot and unless you're in a professional booth painting a show car, they're not really worth it in my opinion. I'm all done spraying the color coats, so I need to clean out the gun before I spray the clear coat. I poured some paint thinner in the gun, swish it around shake it good, spray some through, and dump it out. Now I'm going to do it again. Paint thinner, shake, spray, and pour. And repeat. You can see each time the blue gets thinner. Three or four times usually does the trick. Then I just soak a shop towel with paint thinner and wipe out any remaining paint. Don't forget the edge of the lid too. For good measure, I'm going to spray the thinner through one more time. I'm not going to take the gun all apart and clean it because I'm about to use it to spray the clear coat. I'll take it all apart after the clear coat and clean everything. If there's any royal blue left in there, it's such a minuscule amount that it won't matter because I'm spraying clear over the same color. Here's the instructions for the clear coat and it requires a 4 to 1 mix ratio. Pop this can open, give it a quick stir. Before I start spraying the clear coat, you can see the water has pretty much evaporated. So I'm just going to spray down the floor real quick. Just like before, keeping the spray low. So here's four parts of clear. And one part harder, just a little bit more. I'm giving this a really good stir to be sure everything's mixed. Using a fresh strainer and pouring it in. I wish I had another big mixing cup. Four parts clear, one part hardener, that should be enough. Spray pattern is still good. This color has been drying for about 15 minutes. It looks like a matte finish, but the clear coat is going to change that to a gloss finish. I'm getting this hard to reach area under the glass out of the way first this time. Just like with the color, I'm keeping the clear coats light and even. Same as before. I spray the edges, jams, and hard to reach areas first, then the larger outside areas. Time for a refill, and another to top it off. The second coat of clear should be just like the first, light and even. Okay, taking a break before the next coat. The paint is drying really fast. It's already dry. It's getting pretty warm in here and that's not ideal for painting. It's causing some orange peel because the paint is starting to dry before it has a chance to self level. So because I'm about out of time, this is going to be the last coat of clear. It's gonna be the wet coat. For the wet coat, I'm laying the clear down heavier than previous coats. The wet coat helps to fill in any orange peel or surface texture from the earlier coats. You can see I'm doing the same method as before, 
just moving a lot slower across the panel to really build up the wet coat. I'm going slow to get the wet look, but not so slow that I get any runs or sags in the paint. This hatch is almost flat right now, so that helps reduce the chance of the paint sagging or running. If this was a vertical surface, I'd have to be a lot more careful. Also, it's getting so warm in the garage that I have a little more room for error because this paint is drying faster than it normally would. If you do get a run or a sag, just keep going and let it be. It's not that bad. It can be wet sanded and polished when everything is done. Here's an example of a vertical surface where runs are more likely to happen. The wet coat is the most rewarding part of painting yourself because it goes from looking like this to looking like this. I don't need the rest of this clear. Here's the final product. Time for a close up. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There's some orange peel, but not bad at all, especially considering I painted this in a residential garage. This trim piece turned out real nice. I'm really happy with the bumper too. I think the hatch has the most orange peel of the three pieces. The bumper did start to get some orange peel on the sides where I was painting a vertical surface. I've got some paint thinner in the gun now, peeing on my cardboard, swishing it around to start cleaning it out. I'll be doing this at least a few times. Get some on a rag and wipe down all the parts like the lid, then use a container. I took the breather off the lid, let it soak in the container. Just take the time to get everything clean right now before the paint hardens. I'll just put the whole lid in there, give it a splash of thinner, let it soak. Remove the tip from the gun, toss it in the bucket, need a little more thinner. Here's what's left in the gun. Run some more through there, right into the bucket. You want to make sure you have some towels handy. Look, there's my gloves. Hey, the battery in my camera died, so I didn't get to show disassembling the entire spray gun and cleaning all the components. So follow the owner's manual of your spray gun when it comes to maintenance and cleaning, and it'll last a long time. Mine's probably 25 years old. You get what you pay for when it comes to spray guns, and it's worth spending a couple hundred bucks if you're gonna do more painting. Now I've got to scrub the floor and get rid of this blue overspray. That's better. Keeping the floor wet while painting definitely makes it easier to clean up. The black box fan is kind of bluish now. Don't put anything important outside near the fan or else it could end up with overspray. That's okay for this old rusty Toyota, but I have everything else moved far away. Last, I peeled off any masking tape before the paint was completely dry. If the paint is still soft, the tape is less likely to pull off the paint with it. I let the parts cure in my hot garage for the rest of the week and then, with an extra hand, installed them on the edge that weekend. Here's how it turned out. One more look at the before. And the after. I'm not saying it's perfect, but for an amateur painter in a garage, I'm proud of the results. Not to mention all the money I saved instead of claiming it on our insurance. We had a $750 deductible. And our insurance agent said the rate would go up 300 bucks a year for the next three years if we were to make the claim. That's $1,650 out of my pocket. I paid $350 for the parts, plus $80 for the paint, $20 for the reducer, the clear and hardener would have been about $50. Bucks. I already had supplies like sandpaper, degreaser, thinner, primer, tape, tack cloth, paper towels, but let's say $100 is plenty for supplies, and I'm out the door with everything for $600. I already own a compressor and a spray gun, but I'm saving over a grand, so I could have bought those too and owned them for the next job while breaking even. Six weeks later. Hey, I'm back with the Ford Edge. It's been almost two months since I painted it. I've been busy enjoying the Mustang this summer and fixing up the Land Cruiser. This paint looks pretty good, but we'll take a closer look at that. And my wife doesn't really care for the debadged look. So I'm gonna put the chrome letters back on. So there's something weird happening. If you look right up here, you can see it. It looks like something scraped up the paint or caused it to lift up almost. 
As I look farther down where this trim panel covers the hatch door, there's more of that happening in that gap. Then it's worse at the bottom. There it's almost like it's peeling up. It's a little wet because I just washed it, but that's weird. And it's doing it on this side too. I have no idea why that's happening. If anyone knows why, please let me know in the comments. I let it cure before I installed it. My only guess is that this cover is plastic and the hatch is steel. So maybe they expand and contract at different rates. This car has had plenty of days in the sun this summer. Even though there's a gap between those pieces, maybe after being in the hot sun, the gap was reduced from expansion and the new paint was pressed together and stuck. And then when the parts contracted, the paint pulled off one of the parts. You can also tell there's a difference in color. That might just be the OEM paint fading from years of UV rays though. Another problem area right here. The paint chipped off on the right side. The hatch was contacting here when it was slammed shut. Left side is okay. Up here on the hatch, you can see right here is where it's hitting the bumper. That's the original silver paint showing through. The gap is good up here by the glass, but it's a little too close down here at the bottom. Then over here, there's plenty of gap. It's about the same as the right side by the glass. I don't know how I didn't catch that gap difference at the bottom, but I'm going to adjust that now. That's as simple as loosening the four bolts holding on the hatch, two here and two over here. Then move the hatch a little toward the driver's side and that should do it. I cleaned the letters and applied fresh double-sided tape to the back. This is 3M automotive tape. Quarter inch is the smallest I could find, so I had to cut that in half for the smaller parts of the letters. 3M VHB is the brand. The SEL goes over here. To get everything in the right place, I made a cardboard template from the old hatch before I scrapped it. Pretty basic, but it works. Then I taped it in place. Before I stick anything on, I need to clean the surface with some prep spray to remove any contaminants. First I did the L, then the S, and then the E. Once this goes on, it's not coming off. I was able to skew the E a little bit to straighten it up. I did the same for the edge letters. I started in the center and worked my way out so that I could have more room to space everything evenly if needed. And I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. Once I got the letters started, I found it was easier to make sure they were all straight without the cardboard template. So here it is. One final look at my hard work. Do you think it was worth it? If you have any questions about anything I did in the video, let me know below. As always, thanks for watching and consider subscribing for more how-to videos and Project Vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage. Hey Taylor, did we take off the door? Did we make a convertible? Are you working on it? Oh, good job. Good job.